uncooperative with officers and raised concerns about her ex-boyfriend's well-being. Police officers attempted to locate him, including by helicopter, and later determined that he was safe and not in danger. There have been no arrests. Skip, another Johnny story. What's your take? Yeah. Stephen A., I know you get awfully tired of having to talk about Johnny Manziel, and I'm right there with you. But this story just gets worse and worse and worse. And I spoke last night to a couple of people I thought were close to Johnny Manziel. Both said they're no longer close to Johnny Manziel because he is now, for them, unreachable. And they meant literally, as in by phone, and figuratively unreachable, where they have reached out, tried to help, tried to counsel, said they're there for him, and now Johnny has gone off on his own, and as one of them told me, he doesn't even know who he is anymore. Wow. Both expressed out of a, a tough love sentiment that they hope Johnny Manziel is close to hitting absolute bottom. By that, they would mean getting cut by the Browns and having to realize that nobody else in the NFL wants him in his current state, that they would hope that that form of hitting bottom would finally force Johnny Manziel to look in the mirror and maybe try to come to grips with all of his escalating issues. And as Molly just pointed out, the part of the call on Saturday night or early Sunday morning that jumped out to me was the woman who called said she feared for his well-being as well as her own. Mm -hmm. And that prompted, as Molly said, for police to go looking for Johnny, even having to deploy a helicopter to find Johnny Manziel. Wow, it has come to that. So again, I still love the kid, and, and I'm just fearing that we're watching step by step the unraveling of Johnny Manziel that's going to wind up one of the great sports tragedies that, that we've witnessed from a player who went from Heisman Trophy and first round pick to this. Your thoughts? <clears throat> well, my thought is, is that, um, <clears throat> first of all, we both like Johnny. Uh, we both wish him nothing but the best. But if I were the Browns, I would cut him immediately. Mm -hmm. If I were the NFL, any team in the NFL, I mean, if there was ever a moment for collusion, this would justify it. Because it's one of those situations where no owner should want this on their team. These kind of distractions. That's why when we started off this show talking about T.O., look, man, it, nothing like this. You're never anything like this. You understand? This is just too much. One thing after that, I mean, it's gotten so bad that the city of Cleveland is talking about having a moratorium on Johnny Manziel. Nobody wants to hear his name. They are sick and tired of this guy being in the news for all the wrong reasons. That's what this comes down to. And so for me, it's one of those situations where you want to send a message that if you want to be a professional, then you have to be a professional. You have to conduct yourself in a professional uh, in a professional manner at all uh, on all occasions and at all costs if you want to be a part of this professional environment because the fact of the matter is if you don't send that message then you're inviting problems in the future if you're the National Football League if you embrace Johnny Manziel at this particular moment in time you're inviting trouble you literally are doing so I mean at the very least I'm not talking about banishment forever or whatever the case may be how about just a year how about just sitting there saying, nobody touches Johnny Manziel for the year. It's just too much. How about that? Because you got to remember, she says she feared for her safety. The woman in question. Well, he had an incident with the cops on the side of the road where he was accused of that. Notice how nobody mentions domestic violence. We've mentioned alcohol. We've mentioned the possibility of other substance issues. Nobody has mentioned that domestic violence. And the fact is, is that he has now been involved with two incidences where it can easily be interpreted as domestic violence. And you don't have to go to Greg, you don't have to get to the level of Greg Hardy or Ray Rice 
in order to bring up domestic violence. Molly, you could speak. I mean, I'm not saying per, on a personal level. I'm just no. saying as, as, a, as a woman. I applaud you, know, you for you can, saying this. Exactly. You know, Because it's you, gotten you, to that level. That's right. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to get to that level in order to bring up domestic violence. Mm -hmm. This is now the second time he has been involved in an incident where domestic violence is a possibility. And last but not least, Skip, let's keep in mind, we've sat on this show and we've applauded the absolute role model that LeBron James is, not just because of how he conducts himself on the court, but how he conducts himself off the court, with the spotlight being a global iconic figure, arguably the most significant one in sports at this moment in time, and one of the most significant in history. We talk about how he's about his business, how he's about conducting himself the right way, and how he doesn't tolerate anybody who doesn't. What did he do? Had his marketing guy, and they got rid of Johnny Manziel. That was a clear sign to me because LeBron ain't the type of person that's going to jump ship on you just because a little adversity comes your way. He didn't have to say anything. Perhaps they knew more than we know. And, and we're now learning more and more and more. The fact that these questions exist. Skip, it's not that I'm tired of talking about Johnny Manziel because it's Johnny Manziel. I'm tired of talking about Johnny Manziel because ultimately it's the same stuff. Nothing has changed and something needs to be done. How many times we have to mm -hmm. say that before somebody takes heed and takes the message? If we Listen, our heart goes out to him. We wish him nothing but the best. I hope he gets his life together, but damn that. If it were most other people, we'd be holding them accountable. Why the hell should he get a pass? And on top of it all, you're going to be all right because you got a family, a support base that loves you and want to support you, and you come from oil money. I mean, there are people in a lot more desolate, under desolate circumstances. I, I mean, come on now. They ain't getting sympathy. Why should he? Enough's yep. enough. Enough's um, enough. By the way, just a quick last point of order. When that incident took place in, in the suburb that he lives in outside of Cleveland, I brought up domestic violence, and I was outraged that the suburban police let him go after yes, what did. she said that mm -hmm. was recorded on the dash cam. I, I was just offended by it because they let him skate on it, and they shouldn't have. And I was surprised the NFL that came in and interviewed him the next week let him skate on that because it sounded like it should have been dealt with well, much more severely than it was. And you bring up a very, very salient point, Skip Bayless, because now that all of this stuff keeps circulating about Johnny Manziel, we're now getting to a point where I'm not just looking at Johnny Manziel anymore. I'm looking at the Cleveland Browns. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at I'm looking at uh, uh, Jerry Jones commenting about interest in him, and I'm looking at the NFL yep. as a whole dragging its figurative feet and 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 not and not I doing agree. something. Enough's enough. You're right. You got it. I really appreciate everything you both said there, and all I know is I know we're not NFL quarterbacks, but the three of us would not have our jobs if we had all those strikes against us right now. And again, we hope Johnny gets the help that he needs, but uh, I think it's, it's time to be done in the NFL for right now. Right Up now. next, running back Richard Sherman. It happened last night in the Pro Bowl. We'll